Welcome. I ran a small farm business for a number of years, and in that time I found that about half of the vendors and contractors I dealt with dealt unfairly with me. For example, they would make estimates that were not reasonable given the task at hand, or they would say that a job was not possible when I knew in fact that it was. As an officer in the Air Force, you will be called upon to evaluate claims made by potential vendors, contractors, and the people under you. The analytical skills gained through the successful completion of a college physics course can help you determine whether such claims make sense as you make leadership decisions. I'm Dr. Courtney. In this problem, we're asked how fast we have to whirl a bucket of water around to keep the water from falling out. This has to do with Newton's second law as well as uniform circular motion. And in particular, we need the definition of acceleration in terms of the velocity and the radius in uniform circular motion. To relate the quantity that we're asked for to Newton's second law. And we're asked to find a certain velocity, that is the minimum velocity, which we'll denote by v min, and all we're given is the radius. Now you might think since Newton's second law relates force, mass, and acceleration that we'll need mass. Let's move forward with what we know and then we'll deal with what we don't know as it arises. As we develop this problem, we'll start with a sketch. We get to choose at what point of motion to analyze the bucket. We're not told where to analyze that motion. But we know that since force and acceleration are vector quantities, it's awfully nice when they line up with a convenient coordinate system. So I'm going to choose the position of the bucket at the vertical position for our analysis. Why? Because it lines up with gravitational acceleration. And it has a single component uh, rather than having to be resolved into vectors. So, or into components, excuse me. The radius, we're told, is 75 centimeters. And that's all we're told. As we make a plan for evaluating this problem, we will begin by checking our units and converting anything that is not in MKS units. We know we will be employing Newton's second law, so we definitely want to draw a free body diagram with all the forces acting on the object and specifying the coordinate system that we're going to use. So then we want to go ahead and state Newton's second law. which is that the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration vector. Now we aren't asked about acceleration, we're asked about a minimum velocity. So we also need to recall the definition of acceleration for uniform circular motion, which relates acceleration to velocity and the radius. Then we would be ready to substitute um, the forces and the results from step four into Newton's second law, which we stated in step three. Once we've done that, we want to isolate the value we've been asked to find. Then we will end up with an ex a general expression for the velocity as a function of the other quantities. We're not asked about any velocity, though. We're asked about the minimum velocity. So we need to uh, determine what, what leads to the min and make appropriate substitutions. Then we will be ready to compute. 
the minimum velocity. And before we decide we're done, we want to make sure we report our answer to the correct number of significant figures. Now we're ready to follow our plan and get an answer. Let's start with our units. We're only given one quantity, which is the radius. However, that's in centimeters. So we need to convert radius at 75 centimeters times a meter has 100 centimeters in it. And we get 0 0.75 meters. Next, we need to draw a free body diagram. Let's return to our sketch as we draw that. We will express the bucket as a point mass. What forces are acting on the bucket? The gravitational force, which is equal to the mass of the bucket times the acceleration due to gravity. And what else? At the interface between the water and the bucket, there is a normal force acting on the water. So that normal force is also acting in the same direction as the weight force, and we'll call that F sub n. Next, we need to choose a coordinate system. Since the quantities we're interested in are all pointing downward, it would be convenient to have one of our axes positive in that direction as well. So I'm going to choose my uh, y-axis, positive y-axis down, and positive x-axis to the right. So in this case, we have our free body diagram, and now we are ready to begin working with Newton's second law as an equation. Newton's second law states that the net force equals the mass times the acceleration vector. Since we are dealing with circular motion, the net force is in the radial direction, and that's going to be equal to the mass times the radial acceleration. Since we are not asked about acceleration per se, but rather about velocity, we need to recall that the radial acceleration is equal to the square of the velocity over the radius. Then we can substitute the forces contributing to the net force as well as the expression for radial acceleration in Newton's second law. The forces acting on the water are the gravitational force and the normal force. So we have the normal force, and let's go ahead and write the gravitational force as mass times gravitational acceleration. That's going to be equal to the mass times the radial acceleration, which is v squared over r. The quantity that we're interested in is this v right here, this velocity. So we're going to take a few steps to isolate it. If we divide through by the mass, we get the normal force divided by the mass plus g. Then we'll multiply both sides by the radius. So we have r in each term. And that's going to leave us with velocity squared on the right-hand side. Taking the square root of both sides gives us the velocity as the radius times the normal force over the mass plus the radius times gravitational acceleration. Now we have a general expression for velocity in terms of other quantities. We're asked about a specific velocity, namely the minimum velocity that is required to keep the water in the bucket. So what does that mean? The minimum velocity means that the normal force between the surface of the bucket and the water is almost zero, or goes to zero. So, at the minimum velocity, the normal force is going to zero. And so we will look at our general expression for velocity, and in order for that velocity to be the minimum velocity, we will have the radius times zero over the mass plus r times the gravitational acceleration. So the minimum velocity is just the square root of the radius times gravity. And we didn't need mass after all. Now we can substitute values. V to minimum is equal to the square root of 0 0.75 meters times 9.8 meters per second squared, still under the square root sign. And we find that the minimum velocity is 2.711 meters per second. Checking back with our given value, it has two significant digits, and so we report our answer as the minimum velocity 
is 2.7 meters per second. Before we conclude, let's assess our answer to see whether it makes sense. First of all, let's check our units. We didn't really substitute any values until our very last step. We have meters times meters per second squared. So that is meters squared per second squared. So the square root leaves us with meters per second, which is the correct unit for velocity. So we gain some confidence that way. How do we know whether 2.7 meters per second is reasonable? Well, let's think about how many rotations that would have to be per second. So if we consider the radius of 75 centimeters, or 0.75 meters, one revolution is the circumference. So that is uh, pi r squared. So we would have 3.14 times 0 0.75 meters squared. And that gives us a circumference of 2.36 meters. If we compare this with the velocity that we computed, we see that that's a little bit more than two revolutions per second. So if you've ever seen anyone perform this trick with a bucket of water or something similar, you can imagine that about two revolutions per second is reasonable. It's physically possible and it's enough to keep the water in the bucket. So between checking our units and comparing it to the number of revolutions, <coughs> we gain confidence that our answer is correct.